正会。Rebirth of the malicious empress of military lineage, Chapter 149. Princess Ming undied. Shen Miao was startled. Luo Tan harped on about it, even though it was not clear. Shen Miao was able to understand most of it. There was no doubt that the death of Princess Ming and was on Zi Jingxing's hands. As for those two males, Shen Miao could almost immediately thought that they were the Zi brothers. The more she thought about it, she could not help but take in a breath of cold air. One had no choice but to say that Zi Jingxing was indeed one who was vicious and merciless. If Princess Ming and was harmed ordinarily, there would not be much of a problem. But to put Princess Ming and and the Z brothers in such an alluring manner, everyone would not focus on the fact of that they were dead, but on the love affair between them. It was true that perhaps everything was the perpetrators' doing, but comparing to a cold investigation of the case, this kind of amusing and alluring case was easier for everyone to talk about. No matter what, even if Huang Fu Hao or Emperor Wen Hua suppressed it by force or explaining it by person. No one would believe it. Princess Ming and had an appearance of a princess of a country, but was looked upon like a young lady in a brothel. One fear that when the matter got back to the Ken country, it would also be a joke there. Zi Jingxing was indeed one who was not in the least tender-hearted. As for the Zi brothers, Shen Miao's heart was slightly heavy. Perhaps Huang Fu Hao would be in a rodent rage. But no one was able to prove that the Z brothers forced Princess Ming and to anything, because the Z brothers were also dead. Huang Fu Hao would not be able to take his anger out on the Marquis of Linan, as the Marquis had lost two sons in a row, and that was very tragic. Luo Tan saw Shen Miao's thoughtful look and could not help but ask, "Youngest Biao's sister, have you guessed it? Who do you think the person behind the scenes is to be this audacious?" Shen Miao smiled gently. I am not an expert in investigating cases. If one wants to know the results of it, one can go to judicial bureau to see how the case is trialed. Anyways, Luo Tan was one who says what she thought. I am not a little bit sympathetic to her at all. That princess was so bossy and domineering. One heard that she holds a grudge. So if she was still alive, one would not know if one day she would be able to find a small mistake of youngest Biao's sister. So it is better with the current situation. One do not know which hero helped to eliminate a public threat. Luo Tan rubbed her fists and wiped her palms. Seemingly looked like she really wanted to make friends with that person. Shen Miao took a glance at her and said, "You are very fond of the person who murder and arson." Luo Tan said, "We, the Luo family, have always been clear to distinguish our grudges, hate, love, and gratitude." She suddenly paused and said. Speaking of being clear on grudges and gratitude, previously when you were kidnapped by others, I went to the Great Liang's Prince Ru Ai for help, and he immediately rescued you. Youngest Biao's sister must not forget to thank him when you have time in the future. Shen Miao said, "Many thanks for your concern." Luo Tan patted her shoulder and heard Jing's coming in from outside with a smile. Young lady Luo. Imperial physician Jiao has come to take your pulse. Luo Tan's face instantly changed, and she immediately stood up and said to Shen Miao, "Then youngest Biao's sister, I will leave first. Think about the matter of Princess Ming, and and if there is any conclusion to it, tell me about it, as I want to look for that person." Finishing, it was like she had become a mouse who had seen a cat's tail. And ran off with her skirt picked up. Shen Miao sighed when she looked at Luo Tan's back, and her eyes gradually became serious. Zi Jingxing had made such a big ruckus, and naturally he had helped to unleash the resentment. However, it was after all a princess of a country and involved a number of people. Could it pass by calmly? Shen Miao did not think so. The matter of Princess Ming and and the Zi brothers becoming ice sculptures quickly spread out throughout the entire Ding capital. The people from the government office quickly chased away the people surrounding the Wanli Lake and removed the three people. When Huang Fu Hao saw Princess Ming and Spotty, he flew into a terrible rage that even Emperor Wen Hua was somewhat unable to hold on his own. With Huang Fu Hao's solemn face, he sneered, "In the land of Your Majesty, my Qin country's princes can be this humiliated upon death. One can only be suspicious of what intentions the Ming Chi is harboring. Perhaps Bin Wang should report to Imperial Father about the matter promptly." 
and request for imperial father final decision. Emperor Wen Hu oppressed his heart. The threatening words of Huang Fu Hao made him very unhappy, as he did not seem to take him the Emperor of Ming Qi to mind. However this matter suddenly happened and Emperor Wen Hua did not know how the matter would appear to be as such. The Marquis of Linen, Zi Ding, followed and knelt down as he cried profusely, begging your majesty to investigate this matter thoroughly. Give this old official's son's justice. The hundred of officials in the Hall of the Golden Throne were somewhat sighing. The residence of Lin An was so splendid initially, and when the Marquis of Lin An was young, he was full of metal that he could even find an excuse not to listen to imperial instructions, and at the end could marry the Ming Qi's noble Princess Yu Qing. But since Princess Yu Qing passed away, the residence of the Marquis of Linen seemed to have lost its spirits and gradually declined. Zi Jing Xing, Princess Yu Qing's blood, was a rarely seen young talented character, but was buried by the yellow sand of the battlefield. Emperor Wen Hu initially wanted to deal with the residence of the Marquis of Linen, but upon seeing that the Marquis of Linen squandered himself away after Zi Jing Xing's death, he gradually paid no attention to the residence of the Marquis of Linen. Now that the remaining two Shu sons of the Marquis of Linen died this tragically, there was no one to succeed the Marquis of Linen, and one day would only disappear from the history of the Ming Qi. Recalling the glory of the past and seeing the bleakness of today, everyone could not help but felt grief. Huang Fu Hao glanced at Zi Ding without a trace and a hidden look appeared in his eyes. No matter if the Zi brothers were the victims or not, or if they were placed in that position after death, without a doubt Princess Minutes and innocence and dignity was destroyed because of the Zi brothers. The person behind the scenes was hateful but the Zi family should not be let off. How would the imperial family of the Qin country be able to bear such humiliation? Huang Fu Hao looked at Zi Ding and he made up his mind. Emperor Wen Hua's head ached, and he waved his hand to indicate to everyone to be quiet before speaking seriously. This matter is extremely vile. There is actually someone who dared to commit such a monstrous crime at the feet of the emperor, ignoring Ming Qi's law and order. Zen had already instructed the people of the Judicial Bureau to thoroughly investigate the case and will definitely catch the people behind the scenes and give everyone an explanation. In spite of those words, Huang Fu Hao was not satisfied and said after cupping his hands, since it was the princess of the Ken country that suffered this calamity, may your majesty agree to let my Ken country's people to follow the investigations. Else in the future when one returned and is questioned by imperial father, then Wang would not be able to explain the meaning behind those words was that he did not believe that the Ming Qi would really investigate the matter at all. Emperor Wen Hu irresolutely suppressed the anger in his heart and said, In that case, Zen grant it. After Emperor Wen Hu left, since the hundreds of official in court were unfamiliar with Huang Fu Hao, they did not take the initiative to go forward. However the Marquis of Linen was a big clan of the Ming Qi and they went up to give comfort for encountering such misfortune. During the mass consoling, one person walked to Huang Fu Hao and warmly said, May the crown prince restrain one's grief and accept fate. This person was Prince Ding, Fu Ziyu Yi. Huang Fu Hao was at the point of extreme anger thus when he saw Fu Ziyu Yi, his facial expression did not improve and he cupped his hands before leaving. However he heard Fu Ziyu Yi's voice from behind him, Regarding the matter of the princess being murdered, this one have some thoughts. Not sure if the crown princess is willing to listen. Huang Fu Hao was a little startled. Currently the hundred of officials were busy comforting the Marquis of Linen, and at the same time they just walked towards the corner thus no one saw both of their actions. Huang Fu Hao sneered and asked, could it be that Prince Ding have some wise opinion? One only felt that there are some odd areas. Fu Ziyu Yi smiled without a care, if the crown prince is interested and free, this one is willing to carefully explore it with the crown prince. Huang Fu Hao turned back and Fu Ziyu Yi smiled before turning away to leave. Huang Fu Hao stood on the spot for a while before looking over at Zi Ding, who was being surrounded by people and sneered before he strode away. The person that was investigating the case of Princess Ming and quickly took action because the Qin country's princess was implicated in the case, 
Everyone in the Judicial Bureau dared not lower their guard. But one did not know why there was no small trace or clue in this case at all. After looking through thoroughly at the various scenes, they only managed to find out the fact that there was an affair between Princess Ming and the Z brothers. But this result could not be shown to Emperor Wen Hu. Disregarding the Emperor, one feared that if the Crown Prince of the Qin know about it, he would be furious. The case seemed to be in a deadlock. In the Shen mansion, Shen Kaiyu walked into Shen Miao's room. Seeing that Shen Miao was casually flipping through a biography bought from outside, he then sat opposite her. Shen Miao glanced at Shen Kaiyu and upon seeing that he was stopping what he was about to say, she asked, with how eldest brother is looking at me, does eldest brother have anything to say? Younger sister. Shen Kaiyu hesitated looking as if it was difficult to speak and in a tangle. Shen Miao felt somewhat strange and asked, Eldest brother can just directly speak about it, there is no need to have apprehension. After Shen Kaiyu considered it for a while, he then asked, Younger sister, the matter of Princess Ming'an, is it your doing? Shen Miao was slightly surprised as she did not expect that Shen Kaiyu would actually thought about her. But she quickly smiled, why would eldest brother think so? Just depending on my abilities, one will not be able to take action on Princess Ming and, and the Z brothers. Shen Kaiyu looked at Shen Miao with a complicated gaze in his eyes. After a moment he sighed, younger sister, previously it was father, mother and me who were unable to protect you, and had let you stay with those beasts in human forms. Initially I did not understand what you have experienced but afterwards, one understood. I know that you have knowledge of self-protection but, we are your family. He said seriously and earnestly, so matters do not need you to solve them by yourself. Tell me, father or mother, even though we will not cover the skies with our hands, we can do our best to protect you. Shin Miao's eyes hanged down, and she quickly sorted out the myriad of emotions her heart had and smiled, eldest brother. Your words are correct. Admittedly it's true that we are family, it is just that Princess Ming and matter is not of my doing. I do not have such a capability and do not have such courage. Moreover, she answered the question with a question, never mind if it is Princess Ming and, but what kind of connection does the Z brothers and I have? Shen Kaiyu sighed, you are still not willing to tell me the truth. Shen Miao did not speak. In fact, towards Shen Kaiyu. Shen Miao was revealing the information about her a little at a time so that if there was a time, when one took the route of no return, at least Shen Kaiyu would be able to understand why did she do all these things. But in this world, there would not be success in one step in all matters, so she could not open up with everything. Never mind. I only wanted to tell you that since I could guess that you are connected to the matter, father and mother might not be ignorant to it. Shen Kaiyu stared at Shen Miao with a solemn expression, one have to know that Princess Ming and did not have any conflict with others in the Ming Chi and if there was, it would only be you. If we think like this, the Crown Prince of the Ken country would also think like so. In fact, no matter if this is connected with you or not, there would always be people will put their gaze on you. Younger sister, you are now in dangerous situation. Shen Miao said, but I have nothing to do with this matter, so no matter how one investigate, it would not lead to me, is it not so? With regards to what Shen Kaiyu said, how would Shen Miao not thought of it before? Zi Jing Xing conceal the entire Ding capital's mouth and not let the people in the Ding capital discover any tiny hints, but how would Huang Fu Hao think? Zi Jing Xing could not stop this. You really have such confidence? Shen Kaiyu asked. Shen Miao said, rest assured eldest brother, this matter really has nothing to do with me. Shen Kaiyu then release a little sigh of relief, these days, do not go out of the residence. The Ding capital is not peaceful and moreover, there are still people who harbor sinister motives. There are additional guards in the residence so it is still safer here. Shen Miao nodded her head as Shen Kaiyu stood up. He still had military matters to attend to and had to rush back. Just as he was about to leave, he suddenly thought about something and looked back at Shen Miao to ask, Youngest sister, are you acquainted with powerful people? Shen Miao's heart moved, but her appearance remained calm as she shook her head. No, Shen Kaiyu did not say more and turned around to leave. In fact, 
Chen Kaiyu's worries were not unfounded. On this night, there was a special guest that went to the residence of Prince Ding. This distinguished guest was none other than the crown prince of the Ken country, Huang Fu Hao, who was extremely angry due to the tragic death of his beloved younger sister. In the Hall of the Golden Throne, Fu Zayu Yi's feather-like words to Huang Fu Hao finally made the ever-suspicious Huang Fu Hao make this trip. Before Huang Fu Hao arrived, Fu Zayu Yi had hidden Pei Lang in the room beside, so that he could hear the conversation between the two people through the secret window. Huang Fu Hao placed the teacup heavily on the table and did not dawdle with Fu Zayu Yi, getting right to the point. Previously your highness Prince Ding said that one's beloved younger sister's matter is odd, can one explain in detail? Your crown prince need not be impatient. Fu Zayu Yi smile faintly, I am deeply regretful of Princess Mingan's misfortune. But the current stratagem is not to immediately capture the perpetrator. Huang Fu Hao frowned and sneered at Fu Zayu Yi. Could it be that Prince Ding also believed that Ben Wang should keep the peace? One do not know what kind of laws does your Ming Chi have but in the Qin country, a mishap of a princess of a country is a top priority matter. Even if one keep the peace, in the future when Imperial Father is aware of this, he would definitely seek justice with the majesty of the Ming Chi. It was just a tribute dinner but my kin's princess had to die. Does Prince Ding think this is proper? There was some vague hint of threat in his words. Fu Zayu Yi shook his head and said, Since your crown prince is so anxious, then I would not talk in riddles with your crown prince. Generally when murder happens, there would always be reasons. This matter appeared to be that the Z brothers and Princess Ming and were murdered together, and the other part displayed their corpses in such a way, with the intention to humiliate. It is obviously done on purpose to ensure Princess Ming and's reputation would be at an all-time low. This meant that the other party is clearly targeting Princess Ming and Huang Fu Hao sneered. I naturally know of that. To actually dare to do such a thing. One is really bold. Your crown prince might as well think who would have such an enmity with Princess Ming and in the Ming Chi. Huang Fu Hao was startled and his brows started to knit afterwards. Princess Ming and had an arrogant personality and on normal days would beat and scold the servants, so naturally there would be a number of people who hated her. But after entering the Ming Chi, because of Imperial Father's sincere advice of not making matters sour with Emperor Wen Hu, Princess Ming and had to tone it down. Thus even though Princess Ming and acted rashly towards the Ming Chi's officials, she did not offend them. Unless, Huang Fu Hao suddenly thought of something and his eyes lit up as he asked, You are saying Shen Miao? Fu Zayu Yi smiled without speaking. Impossible. Huang Fu Hao said, even if she has some misgiving with Ming An and afterwards Ming An also made fun of her, Shen Miao is only a woman whereas Ming An had guards by her side. So how would Shen Miao deal with that? Fu Zayu Yi smiled as he shook his head, Shen Miao cannot but you must not forget that she is Shen Xin's daughter, and how does he treat her? In the tribute banquet, the crown prince saw it for yourself. Huang Fu Hao then remembered the day of the tribute banquet. When Princess Ming An and Shen Miao were in a deadlock, Shen Xin, as a father, stood at Shen Miao's side from the beginning till the end, and even expressed his unyielding attitude to Emperor Wen Hu. If one were to say that Shen Xin had gotten a subordinate to take action to stick out for his own daughter, it would not be impossible. Then what about the Shu sons of the Z family? Huang Fu Hao said in a heavy tone, even if Shen Xin stick out for Shen Miao, there would not be any reason to include the Z family's people. Ziding is after all an official of the Ming Chi, thus Shen Xin would not cause trouble for himself. Fu Zayu Yi sighed, Crown Prince still do not understand. These days, it was me who let the Z brothers entertain Princess Mingan, so the Z brothers would be at the same location with her. Since Crown Prince was siblings with Princess Mingan, one would know about the princess temperament. Shen Miao and Princess Ming and were not in agreement and also if Princess Ming and wanted to deal with Shen Miao, it would be pardonable. It is just that the princess is from the kin and Shen Miao is an official's daughter, so there would be inconveniences if one were to take action. Thus the Z brothers were used. Huang Fu Hao was startled before he said angrily, 
It cannot be that you are saying, your crown prince need not be angry. I initially thought of grooming the Z brothers so that in the future they could be subordinates, but these two did not have the fortune of a meteoric rise. You are also aware of the matters behind. It is probably that something went wrong during the Z brothers' plan and at the end it was both of them that died and implicated the princess. Even though Huang Fu Hao had an unbelievable express on his face, the knot in his heart started to unravel. First it was Shen Miao who was kidnapped without rhyme or reason, and at that time Huang Fu Hao suspected that it was the doing of Princess Ming'an. But afterwards seeing that Princess Ming and did not leave the residence and did not know many people in the Ming Chi, he then did not think more of it. Afterwards Shen Miao was sent back to the Shen mansion by Princess Rong Xin unfathomably, and following that, Princess Ming and the Z brothers had the accident. What Fu Ziyu Yi said was correct. Princess Ming and had a personality of one who held a long grudge. Since Shen Miao had caused her to lose face, she would indeed not let it settled so easily. These days the Z brothers often appeared in the residence, and if it was because of this matter, then it was reasonable. But does Shen Miao really have such a big of an ability? Huang Fu Hao still found that something was not right. Even if Shen Xin doted on Shen Miao and had that kind of ability, it would not be a wise move to openly confront a princess of a country. Especially when Shen Xin just returned to the capital and had yet to stabilize himself. Even if he did not think for himself, he would also think about the other people in the Shen family. Was Shen Xin this stupid? To lose all rationality because of his daughter? Afterwards whatever that Fu Ziyu Yi said, Huang Fu Hao did not listen to anything. He felt that Fu Ziyu Yi's words had some logic but felt some hesitance in his heart. Seeing that Huang Fu Hao was somewhat restless, Fu Ziyu Yi did not speak more afterwards. After Huang Fu Hao left, Pei Liang walked out from behind the dividing screen. Your Highness, what is the meaning of this? Pei Liang asked, why must the topic be lead towards the Shen family? Fu Ziyu Yi glanced at Pei Liang and shook his head. Gentleman is ignorant of something. I think that Shen Miao perhaps have some involvement with the great Liang's Prince Ruai. Pei Liang's heart jumped but on the surface it was still like a gentle wind and clear skies. Is your highness still concerned about the matter in the residence of the crown prince? Prince Ruai only came to this country now and Shen Miao left the capital two years ago so there is no possibility of them knowing each other. It would be too far-fetched if one were to say that they have a friendship in these short few months. I know that gentleman feels that this matter is unbelievable, Fu Ziyu Yi said, but I have an intuition that there is something fishy between Shen Miao and Prince Ruai, as these days there are just too many coincidences happening. It is because Shen Miao and Prince Ruai became familiar in these months, then it is deliberated. Prince Ruai is so arrogant that even Imperial Father cannot get close to. I also want to know what kind of abilities does Shen Miao have? Pei Liang knitted his brows and asked, then what does it relate to the matter with the Ken's crown prince today? Fu Ziyu Yi smiled and looked towards Pei Ling, gentlemen believe that Shen Miao alone would not be able to do this and that Shen Xin is not an impulsive person that does not use his brains. Just the Shen family alone would not kill hastily without careful consideration. Pei Liang suddenly understood, could it be that your highness thinks that? Correct. Fu Ziyu Yi said, I suspect this matter is the doing of Prince Ruai. Pei Liang did not speak. Seeing that Pei Liang was silent, Fu Ziyu Yi on the contrary took the initiative and spoke. Prince Ruai's conduct is loud and while the great Liang have numerous capable people, one think that with Prince Ruai's abilities, killing a princess would be just like reaching his hands out. But just as you, I and everyone know, Prince Ruai do not have any grievances and animosity with Princess Ming and, and have no relation with the Z family, thus one will not bring trouble for oneself by doing that. But if it was because of Shen Miao, then everything would make sense. He smiled faintly, even though there was such a saying of being in a fit of rage because of a beauty, I do not think it is so. There must be some special relationship between Prince Ruai and Shen Miao. So your highness let the Ken's crown prince to take action, so as to attract a snake out from its hole? Pei Liang asked, correct? Fu Ziyu Yi smiled, Huang Fu Hao is suspicious by nature and even if he did not believe my words, he would have doubts in his heart. 
and thus would one day investigate. The spearhead will then be directed at the Shen family. If Prince Ruai is linked together with Shen Miao, then he would definitely take action. When the time comes, one will be aware of both of their relationship and make other plans. Pei Liang asked, What if Prince Ruai did not take action, then what? It is of no bother. Fu Ziyu Yi said, if Prince Ruai does not take action then since the Shen family is being overly excessive lately, let Huang Fu Hao deal with them. Suppressing the Shen family's strength is also a good thing for us. Your Highness has already determined to suppress the Shen family? Pei Liang looked towards him. Since they cannot be used by me, naturally one must not leave future trouble aside. Fu Ziyu Yi's smile was warm but his tone of voice was very cold. He turned his head to Pei Ling, in the future, one will need gentlemen to think of more strategies and tactics. Pei Ling continuously said that he dared not accept the honor. After Fu Ziyu Yi left, Pei Ling returned to his room and looked at the lights in front of him, and could not help but sigh. Two years ago, Shen Miao made him hide himself by Fu Ziyu Yi's side to be her spy and Pei Liang had no other choice but to do it. Fortunately he had some abilities that caught Fu Ziyu Yi's eyes. Currently Fu Ziyu Yi treated Pei Liang as the number one confidant. For example, Fu Ziyu Yi did not even hide anything of the secret exploration that Huang Fu Hao did today to Pei Liang, and trusted him a lot. Perhaps it was truly that Fu Ziyu Yi completely did not guard against Pei Liang, or perhaps it was one of Fu Ziyu Yi's techniques of managing his subordinates. It was inevitable for ordinary people to be be even more loyal if one sees one's master treating one well, if only Pei Lang was not Shen Miao's people. The more Pei Lang get along with Fu Ziyu Yi, the more he exclaimed in admiration. Fu Ziyu Yi was indeed a person who had a mindset of longitude and latitude. Not only that, he had the viciousness of a man of character and he was very familiar in hiding a dagger in his smiles. He indeed had the means and methods of a monarch. Pei Liang felt so much that in another few years or ten over years, the entire land under heavens would end up in Fu Ziyu Yi's hands, and Fu Ziyu Yi would become the master of everything under the heavens. There was no other reasons than among the princes in the Mingqi, no one was better suited for the position other than Fu Ziyu Yi. But Shen Miao antagonized Fu Ziyu Yi against all expectations. Pei Liang was not optimistic about Shen Miao, and thus was not optimistic about himself. It was not that he did not selfishly thought about turning his back, but Shen Miao had firmly grasped his vulnerable spot, Liu Ying. As for this little bit of reluctance, it could only drift off with the wind. He looked out the window. Fu Ziyu Yi treated him extremely well, just his individual room was prepared in extreme detail. Pei Liang took out a piece of paper from the head of the table, and picked up the brush and quickly wrote. The night was as dark as ink and in the residence of Prince Ruai, Zi Jing Xing was teasing the white tiger at his feet. Lately the white tiger ate a lot as it was fed by Ji Yu Shu five times a day. Her body was rapidly expanding that she was now a round fur ball. She was not as agile and quick-witted as before when one played with her, and had some bit of a stupid appearance. Zi Jing Xing was an extremely picky person, thus he was too lazy to pick her up and even when he was teasing her, it was also done half-heartedly. A man, who looked like a guard, walked in from outside. He was much younger than Tai Yu and he took out a letter from his clothes before handing it to Zi Jing Xing's hand. This is a letter that came out from the residence of Prince Ding. It was written by Prince Ding's top aide, Pei Ling, to be sent to the hands of fifth Shen young lady of the Shen mansion. Zi Jing Xing's eyebrows raised and pulled the letter out from the envelope and quickly glanced through it. When he glanced at the last sentence, his lips pricked up. In the night skies, his brows were as handsome as a painting and his purple gold robes were flowing with light and color, just like a person in a night painting. It was obviously an indifferent smile, but the Nanchi felt a light shiver and sensed that his master was not happy again. That last line was, be sure to stay away from Prince Ruai.